everyone I'm just uh, gonna take a time to make a short video today just about the different keys that can be used for soda or poda a um, couple of caveats with that is that uh, when I do poda I generally go to the highest point in the area so um, I know a lot of people will go to a parking lot and they'll just operate from their vehicle or just outside on a grassy area but I've been to many parks where it's kind of a low-lying area, and since I have a soda background, I go to a high point and set up my station there. So I'm still hiking, even though I'm in a park in most places I go. Now, these are the keys I'm going to be talking about up here up front. These are the ones I've used during um, both soda and poda. The ones in the back, this is a Bigali Magnetic Classic, and this is a Venture. Um, those are just for reference for size for the the keys that I have in the shack so you can see kind of what a normal key in a shack would look like much much heavier and then these ones in the front um, are the ones I've used so let's just get started this first one is uh, American Morris equipment porta paddle um, it costs about well this one costs 101 because it came with the base if you don't want the base, then it's $79. I mount my keys on a magnetic um, strip on a key, on a uh, clipboard, and so I use the magnets that are on the base. This is spring-loaded. Um, it works great. I used it probably for the first year of soda, um, and full disclosure, I started having problems with my dits cleaned it, still had problems, um, and was getting frustrated, so I switched paddles after a while, but it worked awesome all the time I was using it, and in fact, this isn't my original one, this is a new one, they, they work well enough that I bought a second one, and gave the other one to a friend. The next one is the Pico Paddle. Um, the Pico Paddle originally cost about $116. It is no longer in production, however, so you can't go and buy one. And uh, I will say that it is my favorite out of all the keys that I've used and is the one I still use when I go out. Um, now I've been doing this five years. This is the one is my go-to paddle. And uh, we're all, we've are all we all been really sad that um, they stopped making them. This also has magnetic bottom. It's very, very small, very light. Um, the fingers are really close together. But you get used to that, and it's just a really great key. And like I said, unfortunately, they're just not in production anymore. The tiny key, see if you can see the name there. It's kind of shiny. Um, that's how you pronounce it, tiny key. Um, this is made by the North Ottawa Amateur Radio Club. They sell for $65. It's a pretty sturdy key. Whoops, excuse me. This, this one, by the way, is magnetic. The the um, paddles are magnetic. This one is mechanical. In other words, you just move it. These two, as you can see, are barely apart. It's a little too close. And you just touch it, and those two contacts touch. It's uh, sturdy and robust, so I take this along with me. It's not very heavy, even though it's all metal, as my backup key always. Um, now, the difference between these two for me that uh, that causes me to trip up some is the spacing between fingers this is really close and these with those bows out there seem to be pretty far apart so you just have to get used to that change um, whichever one you use the next one this is a ZNQRP um, and it is, uh, I believe it's his call sign is N3ZN. This is the closest you'll come to like a, um, a shack key. It is, it is heavy. It has like a heavy base like most regular keys do. It is quite a bit smaller and is meant for QRP. It's not really meant for portable, um, but I've taken out just because it is so much like a key in the shack and have used it um, a lot. It's it, This one's gotten worn down just from hiking and taking it out. 
The only reason I don't take this out anymore is because of the weight. Uh, after lots of hiking, you just, I mean, you just tend to go for something that is super light. Um, there's a huge difference in weight between these two. This is a hefty key. It's a great key. Uh, it is closer to the price of the uh, the shack keys. This one is two ninety five. I don't know if I mentioned that uh, when I got it. The next one for those who have a KX two or KX three, you may recognize that. That's what these are: paddles for the KX two, KX three. They plug right in. Um, they cost a uh, hundred and sixty dollars. And um, I don't use it number for two reasons. One is I don't use the kicks too much when I go out because it's an expensive radio and I'm afraid of damaging it um, for the price where the radio I use is cheap and I'm not worried about it getting damaged. But the other reason is that this connects directly into the radio, which I didn't bring out. Um, and so in order to get what angle you want, you have to move the entire unit, the whole radio, to get a nice angle on it, which for me is frustrating out on a mountain. So um, there's a couple of times when I've taken the KX2 out, because I have taken it out before, and then I've just used another paddle instead of these, just because the angle was obnoxious being connected into the entire radio. The last one is the cheapest one. Uh, it's really light. This is a 3D printed one, um, just found on Etsy, just a website that sells homemade stuff. Um, so this is, it's all plastic from the 3D printer with some um, contacts on the inside. It's a little bit bulkier than the other ones, but it's still light. Um, I really don't take this one out as much because it's kind of bulky and uh, I need a bigger kind of case to protect it. Whereas the same even smaller size case for this, I can fit both of these and uh, and not have to worry about either one. And not only that, but um, with these, the, these paddles go hide on the inside and you can, of course, unplug it so that you're not going to damage any of the, uh, the, the paddles on it. So that's a nice feature. Again, sorry they don't make them anymore. So that's basically the overview of the, the paddles I use. Uh, they're all good paddles. They, uh, they all work well out in the field. Um, I just It's just a preference thing and I think after using numerous ones you may have a preference as well. Uh, for sure price can be a major factor. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with CW so I mean these aren't even all the keys I have in my shack. Um, but uh, price wise it's hard to go wrong with something that's thirty dollars and works um, like this and uh, this if they were still in production would definitely be worth the money but the AMEs are are great you know you don't have to get the base and, and get it for seventy nine dollars the tiny key sixty five dollars um, so there's some pretty reasonable keys out there and uh, hope you go out and have a lot of fun and uh, play on some CW. Thanks.